Today on Perpetual Projects, we're going to install a modern master cylinder on our classic car. The reason we're gonna use this master cylinder is our 66 Fury currently has a single reservoir master cylinder with a single outlet. And we wanna upgrade it, not so much for the safety, but for the upgradability of having a modern master cylinder. The reason I chose this master cylinder is this is the exact same, in fact, it is the replacement master cylinder for the one that is on extra parts our race truck. And it works great. I've modified the pedal to have a manual brake pedal ratio. And since our Fury has manual brakes, this master cylinder will work perfectly for our situation. In the future, we plan to upgrade our Fury to disc brakes in the front. And this master cylinder will work well with that. It has the right volume and the pressures are right. And we're actually gonna use Dodge pickup calipers when we convert our Fury to disc brakes. So we're gonna be changing the bore of our master cylinder by an eighth of an inch, and that, that's a pretty big change. And you might be thinking it's gonna take a ton more pressure on the pedal to get the same line pressure to stop the car. Well, I just wanna show you the math of why I know this is gonna work. So our one inch master cylinder has an area of 0.785. Our one and an eighth master cylinder has an area of 0.994. We, in the car, have a pedal that is 13 inches long overall with a two inch pivot point. That means we have a pedal ratio of 6.5 to one. Now, assuming that we need 400 PSI of pressure, line pressure, to stop the car, and that's based on some research on the internet that that's a pretty good number to to calculate with. With the one inch master cylinder, we need 314 pounds of pressure on the rod to achieve 400 PSI of line pressure with the one inch master cylinder. That means that we're gonna have to put 48 pounds of pressure on our brake pedal in order to achieve that. Now with our inch and an eighth master cylinder, we need 397 pounds of pressure on the, on the, the rod to achieve that 400 PSI and that's gonna require 61 pounds of pedal pressure, which means that we only need 13 pounds more pressure to achieve 400 PSI of pedal pressure. I don't know if that is panic stop pressure or if that's just normal braking pressure, but I can tell you that for most people, it shouldn't be hard to hit double those numbers. I mean, I weigh 220 pounds and I can stand on one foot, so I have enough pressure, enough muscle in my leg to achieve 220 pounds or 230 pounds of pressure without much trouble. So we should have no problem stopping this car with our increased master cylinder bore size. Plus, like I said before, I have this master cylinder on my race truck with manual brakes and a six to one pedal ratio and disc brakes on the front, which require, according to my research, double the pressure to stop the car. And I have no problem stopping that truck. It has great brakes. But as always with brake systems, it's best to do your research and figure the math out for yourself and make sure you calculate and only do what you're comfortable with because yours and other people's lives could be at stake. So some of the parts that we're gonna to use to convert our Fury is a couple of 10 pound residual valves. You need these because this master cylinder doesn't have any residual valves in it. These hold pressure against the wheel cylinder cups and keep them in the right position so that they don't start leaking. Once we get past the master cylinder and the residual valve for the front, we're just gonna be using a brass T to T to the left and right. We're gonna use a set of brake lines off of another parts Dodge pickup we have because they adapt to the master cylinder and they'll allow us to put our residual valves in line right here before the T. For the rear brakes, we're just gonna run the residual valve and then go straight to the rear brakes with the original lines. All the rubber hoses and all the wheel cylinders have already been replaced on this car. So once we get this done, with a little bit of bleeding, we should have great brakes on our Fury. We'll throw links in the description for the residual valves and this brake line kit that we bought. This master cylinder, is for a 1990 Dodge pickup. And although we did get it off of Amazon, I don't feel comfortable linking the part number. Uh, if you're gonna buy one, you need to make sure you buy one that'll work for your application. The first thing we have to do is get our old master cylinder out of the car. We gotta disconnect it from the brake pedal inside the car and then disconnect the line and take the bolts out that bolt it to the firewall. Okay, now that we have our master cylinder out, the next thing we need to do is figure out what we're gonna have to do for the brake rod. Um, as you can see, this one's got a spring on it. 
we're not gonna put that back on. I know our master cylinder has a return spring in it. So we're gonna get this out and see what we're gonna have to do to modify this rod to work with this master cylinder. I really wish I would've got that on camera. I literally took it out of the old master cylinder and popped it in the new master cylinder and the little plastic clip hooked it in here. It's not coming out. That's perfect because I was wondering how we were gonna deal with that. So, bonus. The next thing is we gotta mount this master cylinder to the firewall. And as you can see, our original master cylinder had four bolts with the piston and the master cylinder roughly in the middle of them. And our new master cylinder has two bolts lined up with the piston. So what we're gonna do is we'll drill two new holes in the firewall right here, or where this will line up. And then once we install this, I'll go ahead and put the bolts back on these two studs that are in the car and add two bolts to replace these two studs because that actually bolts the brake pedal mount to the firewall stiffener plate. And they had four, I'm gonna put two plus the other four, I'm gonna have six, so it'll be better than it was. Okay, so you can see here what I was talking about. We've got the original master cylinder bolts on the top and the bottom, and then our new master cylinder bolts right there in the middle. That's nice and solid. It's bolted into the stiffener plate and the brake pedal mount on the inside. Now, we need to start working on our brake lines. I got a pointer. So, just gonna give you an idea what we did here. So, on this master cylinder, the smaller compartment is at the front. So we use that for our rear brakes. And then our, I use this, mat, this line off of our Dodge truck pick up, uh, parts truck out there. It fits the master cylinder, goes down, and goes into our 10 pound residual valve. You can't see the arrow on this one, but it's the same as this one. It goes in this side, out the other side. So then I flared here, and then this is just the factory rear brake line. Uh, it was going into the back of this T, and I just brought it up here, made a nice loop in it, and it goes right into our residual valve. Then for our front, I used the same line off of the parts truck and went down and into our residual valve for the front, and then I had to make another line that went from the out of the residual valve into the back of the T where the original rear brake one went in. This is just an open T, it's just like a manifold. So originally the fluid came in here from the single port on our master cylinder. Now it comes in the back where the rear brakes went in and I couldn't put it here because this is bigger tubing and I didn't have a, well I didn't have an adapter to go to the residual valve or any extra tubing or anything to make that work. So I just welded the end of this shut with the TIG welder. And so now that'll hold pressure there. And we have our front brakes going in, splitting and going to each side down here. So now <clears throat> we need to go get brake fluid because I just poured the last of what I had in there. Too late to go to the parts store tonight. So we'll be doing that in the morning. We'll get the brakes, brakes bled and uh, we're gonna take this thing for a cruise and see how it goes. We'll see you guys in the morning. Okay, so on second thought, we don't have lights, we don't have plates, we don't have insurance, and we don't have seat belts. So we're not gonna leave our property. We're just gonna go around the back, come around the front, and see how the brakes work. Brake check. Wait, we don't have seat belts for a brake check. Cylinders 
working exactly like I expected it to. So, <clears throat> if you have an old car with a single pop master cylinder and a single line coming out of it, I recommend doing your research, finding a modern master cylinder that will work for your application. And you can get these with smaller bores if you don't want to deal with the increased pedal pressure. I think it's a win, and it really wasn't that hard to do. See you soon.